Okay, so someone wrote a comment uh, a few days ago that, Nandi, how can I actually make sure that when I have some sort of navigation on my website that opens down like this, I can not only close it by going to the top right and clicking close, but actually just clicking somewhere here, maybe like here or here or here or here, like, you know, just click away to dismiss it. You know, this is a pattern that is pretty cool and, you know, you would maybe expect it if you see an open navigation or something like that. But in Framer natively, you don't really have this unless you're using overlays. But, you know, such components for a navigation is not an overlay, but an actual component. So in this video, I'm going to explore it with you, how you can hack around and trick around to create something like that, where you open a navigation or a menu and then you click anywhere outside of that to close it, dismiss it. So yeah, my name is Nandi, this is Frame University and let's get started. Okay, so before we start anything, I just wanna make sure to let you know that if you don't know how I built this example sort of like component for the navigation, make sure to check out framer.university, go to the lessons page, browse all and then just search for Navi. You're gonna find this how to make a navigation bar in Framer. This basically is a uh, quite long video. It's actually over an hour, but it showcases every single step I took to get to this point where I have this navigation here set up with the desktop and mobile open as well as mobile closed variants. This is what I'm going to be taking as like a starting position for a tutorial. So yeah, if you don't know how I got here, make sure to watch that video. So now that we're here, let's actually explore because I think I know it and I actually, I think I've done it before, but but yeah, we're going to kind of explore together how something like this can be created. So the basic idea is that we're going to create a hidden like frame in the background that we use as a trigger to to close the menu. And hopefully that makes sense. Now, before I actually do that, I want to also kind of make sure that when I open this, this part here gets a little blurred, right? So I don't know if that's something I can actually do, but I'll try. So I'll just press F on my keyboard, draw a frame. I'm going to put it within this component. I'm going to set the position to absolute, uh, pin to the left, right, and to the top with zero pins. The bottom pin is not needed. And I'll set the height to viewport 100. And this is just going to be called, hmm, I'm thinking because maybe we're going to use this as an actual like hidden trigger frame, not only for like darkening and blurring the background. Um, yeah, actually that could work. So we're just going to call it like trigger, but we're going to also use it for like darkening and blurring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the layering is correct. So the content should actually be over this frame, right? Like this. Perfect. So the trigger is going to be sort of like a darker tone, black, maybe drop the opacity so it's not fully black. Maybe it's going to be 0.6 and then the filters BG blur will be added maybe with eight pixel blurring and that's perfect. The trigger will be set to, or this, yeah, this trigger frame will be set to opacity zero uh, on the desktop and on the phone open, we're going to set it to opacity one. Actually, not one, but 0.6. So it's a little bit see through. Okay, so now let's go back to the home and actually take a look into how this works. Okay, pretty nice. Uh, I'm going to just actually change it back to phone closed by default. So it blurs the background, which is great. I like that. However, I don't like that it's like animating in from the top to the bottom. You know, that's something I don't really understand why would it happen because the trigger itself is 100 VH and it's pinned to the top so it should in theory keep 100 VH all the time. You can also see it on the phone closed it's 100 VH. So why would it be animating in from the top to the bottom? The only possible reason is maybe the overflow. So on 
the actual navigation component I have overflow set to hidden and here you know the variant is super small everything that's outside is hidden with, with because of hidden overflow so I think if we set that to visible we're gonna be good indeed we're good but now we are seeing the color of this content frame which I don't really want to see so I'm gonna set it to zero percent maybe uh, that's not gonna be great because I want to see the color here on this top part so what can I do well um, I don't know I don't know maybe actually we can try one more thing I'm gonna undo maybe we just set overflow to visible only on phone open well no, it's not gonna be perfect I think uh, yeah better like when it when it opens it's fine when it goes back not perfect but it's gonna be great it's gonna be great for now so let's let's get to the juicy part how can we make sure that when we click away it dismisses well let's try this i go within the component and this frame that we created as a trigger which you know not only you we not only use as a trigger but also for darkening the background and blurring it now we're going to use this as a trigger so i select this little like frame and connect from this to the phone closed and it's going to be a click interaction let's see i'm really <laughs> i'm really excited to see if this works so open and then close <laughs> it actually works so cool so now i can no longer just you know not only click here to close it but i can also just click here and close it so i can just dismiss it which is pretty good I think it's, it's actually a pretty like cool little trick that if you think about it you can use like almost anywhere because you know in some cases you might want to like create a component let me let me actually pull up frame universe because i have another example that we can just look at for example i have this um little recreation of this interaction where you have the set status button you click it and it opens this up so what if you kind of want to be able to dismiss this by just clicking here anywhere around this element you cannot really do this because you know like how do you know that you clicked somewhere around you know you're it's just a component it's not an overlay so you know in this case we can use the same technique just create a large frame in the background and use that as a hidden trigger frame where we connect a, like an interaction from we might actually take a peek within this file as well to see if we can modify it a bit to make sure that when we click away we dismiss this little pop-up let's let's take a quick look so i'm going to remix this now really quickly i'm going to go within the component and so this is the component here um as you can see when i click the default i go to clicked but when i'm here on the clicked I want to go back to default when I click somewhere around here. So for that, we're going to create a frame. Just press down F, create the frame, put it within, set it to absolute, and just make sure that everything else is over it with Z index larger. So the set status button, the popover is going to be larger. Uh, Z index. I don't know why Z index is not being added or I just cannot see it. So let's set the index to five on the four and the set status button as well. By the way, this was created in a tutorial. So if you go to my video, you're going to probably find this. It's an hour and 15 minutes long. So it's pretty long, but you see the whole process. So the point is that we have created these two little, um, oh, sorry, we put this index to larger on, the, on these two elements, this and this. So now the frame is in the background. We can make it larger. Ooh, that's that's crazy. And so the trick here is that we make this super large. Like we literally just set the pins to like we deactivate all the pins, and we set this to like width I don't know five thousand height to maybe I don't know three point five thousand. Uh, <laughs> you can see that makes it super large, but we can remove the fill color so it doesn't like bother us. We can call this trigger too. You might be asking why I'm making it so 
Ah, oh, God, my camera froze again. We're back. So uh, the reason why we're making it super large is we want to make sure that even though we have like a large monitor and the site is large, um, you know, this thing in the background, it's it's like always there. It's here, 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 here all around. If we just make like a 500 by 500, it's going to be just like this. And if you click here, it will work. But if I click here, it won't work. So that's why I make sure that this trigger frame is like gigantic like you can see how large it is so what I can do is on this clicked state I can just select the trigger frame and I can go and um, just press down L on my keyboard and link it to the default so on click I go back there uh, hopefully that works again I'm gonna go here 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 set status boom and then if I click anywhere around, <laughs> it dismisses it. Absolutely amazing. Lovely. If I click here, it works. Everything works. No problem. But yeah, I just click anywhere and it, yeah, it just dismisses it. Pretty cool. So yeah, um, it was actually a pretty cool video. We, we kind of explored how we can create these hidden trigger frames. In some cases, it can be gigantic to make sure that we create these little interactions where something opens, maybe a popover appears, maybe a menu opens, anything, and we click somewhere around the page to dismiss it. Well, with this little hack, we can we can do that. So, pretty cool. Now, I really hope it was helpful. If you have any questions about this or new ideas, or if I missed something or whatever, make sure to drop a comment and also, also, if you don't know about Framer.University, make sure to check out this website. It has a Framer like resources section where you can browse like a bunch of resources. As you can see, it has over 500. So you can just scroll down here. You can literally scroll forever and find scroll animations, components, interactions, and all of these are projects that you can remix. So you just click a button and you're gonna get access to the to the file. So you can use it on your websites, on your personal sites, commercial sites, whatever. Like you can use it anywhere. Maybe on your templates too, just to make them look cooler or just add like a wow effect to them. So yeah, check out Framer University. It also has a bunch of lessons, blog posts. So if you're learning Framer or if you're, I don't know, just using Framer, I think it's gonna be a super cool resource for you. So yeah, that's it for this video. Make sure to like it, subscribe for more, and I'm going to see you in the next one.